original point about uh, that's why we're moving uh, back to this old-fashioned thing called canvas and oil paint. And um, I think, you know, people only have to go along to uh, Luxcon and look at the sheer quality of the work that's been produced by some of these people. Uh, all of it of a fantastical nature. You know, I mean, Amer- America, you tend to have a preponderance of what I call high fantasy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, dragons and uh, George R. R. Martin and Tolkien to write stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm less inclined to that. I must say I'm more of a science fiction person, so you get some of that as well. Uh, but the newest stuff I'm doing in part is science fiction, but also mythological subject matter, mm-hmm. you know, mythology and what have you. Stuff that's always interested me, but there's never been a call for, so I'm able to now go and um, have a crack at it. And the whole point of the exercise is to do a sufficiently finished job on these things. Uh, when they, uh, <coughs> they turn up, they like to start ship them over, they go up on the walls, and of course the collectors come in with their, hopefully their packed wallets, and you know, <laughs> you're all competing with each other for the contents of those wallets, basically. So, well, I, I um, think... Um, I think... kind of, uh, you know, don't look at his work, look at mine, look how much better my stuff is, and all this. <laughs> so it definitely pushes the envelope in terms of trying to improve the quality of your work. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, when you're at this age, as I am 70 now, um, it's like a real challenge, and it's forcing new new things on me, really, that yeah. I'm really enjoying. And I think I'm doing my best work ever, really, to be honest. Hmm. Um, it's gone up and down in my life, and you know, I'm not all that happy with a lot of the stuff I've done, and there are high points and low points. But I'm really pleased I've moved across to oils on canvas. I mean, I do it all, except, you know, I, I, I buy in the best sort of finding on canvas. Of course, now I'd like to actually come and set the stuff up, because, hmm. but paint the canvas. But uh, anyway, get the canvas in, stretch it myself, and then uh, uh, size it with the old rabbit skin blue size and uh, prime it, do it, do everything the traditional way. Mm. And then I've been learning this technique called, um, it's called, uh, there's three forms of it. One is one is brown, one is grey, and one is green. Uh, the green one, which is the one I tend to prefer, is called grease eye. Mm-hmm. And brown is green eye, and grey is grease eye. Uh, sorry, bird eye is the green. Mm. Bird eye green, grease eye grey. Brown. And that's basically you create a painting in a single mono, monochromatic tone. Mm-hmm. So all of the greens or uh, might be uh, and umbers and whites. And uh, you build up the painting, all the tonal values and the detail work is done at that stage. So you get it all put in without having to mix paint or take it down. It's quite quick, you know, you can be mm. quite quick. With it. And then you use glare, colour glazes, transparent glazes over the top to get the depth of colour. Hmm. And that's something I found the airbrush is very useful for, actually calling on that old tool again. Hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's very effective, and it's um, it's a beautiful way to work, and it's suddenly realised why a lot of the old, the old Renaissance things faded as they are, and colours might have changed over the years, but why they're so rich and deep, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it's this kind of technique, which, so it's all new to me. Um, it's quite a know, warm... I've been um, flat all the acrylics all my life... Uh, I mean, I dabbled with oils at the beginning, back before 1980, but in my own rather peculiar way. It wasn't at all the traditional method. Uh, but uh, now, you know, to ditch the acrylics completely and just use oils in the future. It's almost like, um, you know, when you talk to uh, bands that uh, get to a point where they're quite rich, you know, <laughs> and, um, you know, they, they start to realise that the, the roots of their own music... Uh, is important yeah, so they, go, they always go back to like uh, the blues or jazz or something like that you know yes yeah, yeah, yes appreciating what's gone before and um, yes certainly uh, one, one big difference there is um, I, it's certainly not made me rich and <laughs> 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 uh, I'm, I'm hoping still that I might make a be- better living out of this stuff uh, in the future with these sorts of sales but you know you can only paint so many of these things mm. and um, you know if they're detailed and large as mine are they're getting bigger if anything these things and um but, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's, I've always done it, it's, uh, it's, it's fun, funny to even call it a job, really, but it's, I turned a hobby into a, into a way of making a living, really, and I'm still having to do that, because, yes, I'm not rich at all, so I'm having to work, really, and basically, until I drop, but then people who paint pictures, they don't stop, you know, it's like writers and composers, you just go and do it, and you don't decide, oh, I'm 65 now, I think I'll stop, and what, sit there and sit in a chair and just uh, fade away, that's not quite my approach to these things. Well, I've always but, yeah, you, do, you do definitely as you get older, you know, because you've built up some experience of mm. the world of art, if you like, or the world of music by being part of it, you do start to appreciate more what went before mm. and start to dig into it a little bit and find the, the true value that lies in, um, in tradition, you know. Uh, there's 
much hard with art, I have to say, because um, when I look around me at what passes for contemporary art, <laughs> I can't say it amuses me very much. I find most of it absolutely tedious in the extreme. I know that's a little bit outside my territory, but... Uh, well, one thing I found about it is, I mean, uh, let me explain a bit about my own background. So, um, um, I want to be an illustrator mm. as a kid, right, you know. Um, but my... My, my um, thing was at the time, because uh, computers just came out this, yeah. uh, in the uh, mid 1980s, yeah. um, and I found a niche because um, I was quite average as an artist, to be quite fair, you know. Yeah. Um, but um, it turned out that most of the art was done by, by by programmers. You know, this is back when um, there was about 20 people in the entire world, probably, that was actually making computer games. Yeah. But just getting the multiple computer and, you know, making them work in that digital format. Yeah, yeah. Primitive as it, as it was, you know. And um, I carried on until uh, 3D came along, and I, I struggled to... I, I didn't really struggle, I, did, I didn't really care for it, you know. It's, yeah. it's a different um, methodology, you know. It's You're making things in 3D, and I can imagine it's things in 3D. It's a learning isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it looked... Soulless, you know, it, it was just really soulless. Um, so, you know, I, I, I basically stuck with my 2D for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just refused to, um, you know, go into the 3D thing. I'm, I appreciate there's a lot of 3D stuff that is quite nice looking, but. And that carries on to the, what you said about the books, though. So, um, you know, you get these illustrations now that are just 3D models. Yes. yes. And th- there's no soul to them at all, it's just someone with a lighting effect and. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've never. Um, I, I only use Photoshop myself um, in my digital work. Mm. I've always tried to um, just emulate my painted style, really, if you like, on the computer. Uh, try to get things out as quickly as I can because, as I say, they don't pay a lot. Uh, these uh, pictures, and then mostly it's a small press as well. The big publishers rarely use me now. Uh, I never learned how to do 3D. I was just too old. I think by the time I got to the late 90s, I thought, well, I can either start painting again. Mm. Really, you know, for myself. Yeah. Or I can flounder around trying to master this 3D stuff, which looked appallingly difficult to me. And I think, you know, the, the young man's brain is required for that. And I agree with you, a lot of it, um, there's a lot of it around that uh, leaves me stone cold, you know, it just doesn't do anything for me. Um, however, having said all that, um, if I was a younger man, and if I'd been, you know, say, about 20, something like that, at 20 years old, back in the 90s, um, and I was going to follow a, a, a life of illustration, I think I would have been very drawn to the digital thing. It did seem to be the, the coming medium, didn't it? You know, mm, that's yeah. what everyone seemed to want. And, um, <clears throat> and, I, and I do find it fun, actually, working on a computer and the way I do work. I, I, it's a nice break from the stink of the paint and the turps <laughs> and the, uh, the, the general, the physically tiring aspect of painting large on canvas. Sitting in front of the computer, I find, is a bit sort of, you can almost go on to automatic doing it on there. Um, you've got to focus, obviously, and you want to do your best for the client. But it's a different kind of uh, bunch of sensibilities required for it, it, it seems to me. Um, but having said all that, I mean, the best digital world that work around, some of it's brilliant, I think, you know, there's some amazing stuff. Yeah. Um, but the, the one thing I would say about it, when you look at, uh, say, a collection of different artists' digital work, it sometimes gets a little bit hard to differentiate between one artist and another. Yeah. Um, you know, good as they are. And there's a digital look, a slickness to a lot of it. That's, um, as you say, this. it's, <laughs> I don't know, soulless is where maybe it is soulless. I don't, there's something, something missing somewhere. Um, Personality. Personality, yeah, that's that, uh, yeah, and, but again, another, another plus for computer, uh, for digital art, I would say, is that, um, my, a lot of the drawings I do, uh, first of all, I feed into, scan into my computer and build up illustrations working from pencil drawings and from bits of paintings and stuff, I often sample my own work and take them across and, uh, you know, work on them and change them around and give us, because I've got quite a, an archive of painted stuff which I can recycle, which makes a lot of sense uh, in terms of when, when you're working with very low budgets, etc. Mm, yeah. And I'm quite good at sort of manipulating things around so they're brand new. Um, but also the other way around, and the digital look, there are some aspects of it to do with maybe the complexity of stuff that I found is fed across into the painted look as well. There's a kind of um, a flow that goes back and forth between the two when you decide to work in both mediums. Hmm.